Kirstner from Big Fairley Ambrose. Oh, an inside nick. Jimmy Adams diving away. A difficult one to stop, but he does so. So Andrew Jones a little lucky, perhaps, with that inside edge. Well, Jones playing the ball a little bit on the move here. And a big, thick inside edge, and that's well, that's well saved. Oh, that's a nasty one. He had to whip back and had a bit of bounce, and uh, dear, oh me. Well, I get the feeling we may see quite a bit of this while these gentlemen are in the country. This is definitely a bit quicker, and Ooh. that has, well, I think it's hit a midships. Be rather painful. Yes, you certainly wouldn't want to forget an important piece of equipment uh, with that delivery, would you? A few deep breaths. Ambrose doesn't look particularly concerned. So the West Indian side in the field and a good tight start in their we'll, effort. Let's watch where Ambrose actually bowls this delivery. Is he going to go for the Yorker? He's inflicted some pain, or is it just going to be... Yep. Sure, the back foot. Good shot. That may be four to get things underway. A big chase round there. Four runs. So Brian Young's reply is a very good four behind point. And Courtney Walsh to continue. Andrew Jones this time. He's headed away at almost identical position from the other end. It won't quite make it to the boundary. They've got two and they're coming back for the third. So a couple of good shots livens things up here at Eden Park. Here's a good shot from Andrew Jones. He'll pick up a couple into the covers. So two more, well played. That's oh, this is flying off the shoulder of the bat. So just two bounces down to Dunraj at uh, third main, but that was a very difficult delivery to handle from Kirtley Ambrose. Young on strike. This one fine enough, it'll run away for four. Kenneth Benjamin's just a little wide down there at fine leg, and Kirtley Ambrose not overly happy, but he did strike. He just stray down the leg side. And Young will take it. It's one of the few times that Ambrose has actually pitched up. He's been short of a length. Players have been playing him off the back foot. Yes. Quick single here, taken very quickly. And that's Campbell coming in quickly from just in front of the umpire. And it's gone through for four overthrows. So New Zealand will take five for that. We just watch, and if it just... It may well have deflected, and that's just bad luck. It's not intended by the batsman, but it can't be dead balled either. And the runs must count. slip and uh, so Jones is on his way and the first New Zealand wicket falls with the score at 31. The Kiwis are optimistic as Walsh bowls to new batsman Perore. Perori opens his account with a single down to Anderson Cummins, a third man. Oh, he's beaten by a good one this time. That really was a good ball from Ambrose. And Perori beat all ends up to end the over. So that is 11 overs completed now. Adam Perori batting a first drop for New Zealand today. Courtney Walsh has his second wicket and New Zealand 35 for two. Well, joy for the West Indies. Dismay for New Zealand. Adam Perori, as he was doing to Ambrose, really not going anywhere with those feet. Going back to deliveries he perhaps should be going forward to. And just able to catch up with this one. The shots have all been very similar. But the result this time is not good for him or for New Zealand. And Adams takes that one very, very easily indeed. Now 35 for two, New Zealand. Well played by Young. Chase 
is for Walsh. And the batsmen should turn for three here. And indeed they do. That's well run. That's a lovely stroke from Young. This should go all the way. And that is four runs for Brian Young. We cut this one. That's very cuttable indeed. Down to big Kirtley Ambrose. He slipped over. Dear oh me. And uh, the big crowd down there enjoyed that. Probably Kirtley Ambrose didn't much. I don't think that'll please the tall man. No, that's the 50 up for New Zealand. Bouncer. Hooked four. Great shot, Ken Rutherford. No ball call. Too high. Poor delivery. Dispatched to the boundary. He had to hit it. It would have hit his head. Scurrying through quickly here. Touching and coming back. Yes, they're going to go for the second. And a little bit of indecision there. Cummins misfielded. Young had touched to come back very quickly. Rutherford, I think, had given the opportunity away. But it was such a major misfield that Young decided to come back for the second. Over the top. Slight miscue, but it clears. And it'll go to that shorter boundary for four. A much slower one from Cummins. He dragged his hand across the ball as well. And the shot able to be adjusted and hit through the line for four. Well, as we're going to see on the Bank of New Zealand replay here, that uh, Cummings didn't get that right at all, but it gave Young plenty of time to get on the front foot. He knew if he cleared that inner ring, it was going to be four. And that's probably a much-needed boundary for New Zealand at this stage in the game. The umpires are having another word here as we look at the... The analysis, Ambrose is off the field after his six overs, slipping down at uh, third man. Yes, I think they are bringing out the covers. Atherton resumes after the break for rain, and immediately Rutherford takes one run, looks for a second, they'll get a second too, as Benjamin misfields. New Zealand will be hoping for a few more errors like that. The outfield is bound to be a little bit slippery on top. Held for caught behind, Rutherford's out. A little bit of turn for the spinner and Ken Rutherford is caught behind. It's very unfortunate for New Zealand and unfortunate for Rutherford. It was a wide delivery. He's looking to hit it through the offside. Got a big nick. Good catch, Jimmy Adams. Umpire had no hesitation, and that's disappointment for the New Zealand captain. New Zealand 67 for three. Shane Thompson is the new batsman for New Zealand, replacing captain Ken Rutherford as we have another look at the Bank of New Zealand replay. Big thick nick this is, and... Adams, regulation catch, but he's delighted. Good breakthrough for New Zealand. Well, this rain is really proving a more than nuisance value. Thompson's underway. Good-looking shot. And just the one run for Shane Thompson. So New Zealand really now, John, have to get that run rate up quickly. You can see there the rain is quite heavy. Pleasant drive from Brian Young, and a single for him. This time, no mistakes from Benjamin. And that is the end of the over, and the umpires are signalling the covers on again. So we got one over in, and they've gone again at 69 for three, and it really is raining very heavily here at Eden Park. Welcome back, everyone. Fingers crossed uh, the weather is good now at Eden Park. The sun is out, as you can see, and, well, things looking a lot brighter. A 37 over game now and Shane Thompson will take strike to Cummins. But we're obviously now going to see a completely different attitude from the New Zealand batsmen. They don't have many overs to go. And the adjustment certainly is going to favour the West Indies here.
Madison Cummins bowls to Thompson. Nicely edged away by Thompson. He should come back for a second here. No slip in. And two more for Thompson. That's beautifully played. There is a man down at uh, third man. And again, they'll come back for two. Well, there's a lot more urgency now in the New Zealand batting. Hammer down the ground by Young. And that's beautifully played. I thought for a moment the fieldsman had it covered. But it was superbly timed by Brian Young. He has played really well, Young. And that's a lovely stroke. Perfect use of the feet. Well balanced. There he goes, down the wicket, two little chips, getting it on the half volley and hammering it past Arthur, who's a good fielder. Oh, he's bowling. Straight through the quicker ball. Young didn't pick it at all. And Arthur, showing no emotion whatsoever, takes the wicket of Brian Young. Always Keith Alperin's better ball, that faster one. He has a very quick arm action, but you would say that it was not the best shot you've ever seen played by an opening batsman. So Young departs New Zealand 80 for four. Big moment for Nathan Astor, the Canterbury player making his debut for New Zealand today. Gets a quicker ball and then gets away nicely. A single off your first ball for New Zealand, and a good start for Nathan Astor. Let's have a look at the back of New Zealand replay. The dismissal of Brian Young. Premeditated shot, to Tony, and he was completely done. Well, premeditated, yes. A shot, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Calling hesitation. Thompson has to go, but the keeper can't get up. Well, I guess they have to take risks now. Well, what was Shane Thompson doing there? He was watching the ball going to bid on. It was certainly Astor's call. And he took off immediately. Shane Thompson was looking to see where the ball was going. And he would have been out by a mile. to about three and a half now. Five runs off this over so far. Good shot. Should go all the way. Four to Thompson. End of the over, it's 90 for four. All the way by Astor. Thinking about a second and going. That's well run. Oh! Arthur starts a new over and appeal for a court behind. Not given. The thing to listen for here is uh, any noise. Maybe there was just a sound of something as it went past the bat. We may have another listen for that. is still a threat as Arthurton bowls to Astle. Well, heading down the ground, and this is going to be four, so four more. Nathan Astle, a good shot. 100 up for New Zealand, four wickets down, 37 over game, as you see, and we're in the 28th over. That's good shot from Astle, good bowl shot. The middle one was up inside the circle when the delivery was bowled. And clearing quite easily down to the fence for four. So plenty of action here at Eden Park now with this reduced game. And Heath Arthur to the ball. Short, cutting. He's got it through the gap. Hasn't hit it that well, but it may go all the way. Not quite. Coming back for three. That's good running by these two. So a bit of excitement for the uh, crowd that's hung around. Frustrating time, but some good cricket now. Down the wicket 
goes Thompson. He's cracked this one, and that's going to be four. One bounce into the extra cover boundary, so a good over for New Zealand this one. Just wonder how long Courtney Walsh is going to persist with Keith Alperton. He's got other options up his sleeve. New Zealand batsman deciding to really go after the left arm spinner. That's a magnificent sh uh, shot from Thompson. He's cleared the circle quite easily there. Set it with a lot of timing, and the placement was also excellent. Nathan Astle on strike. Don Raj. And a little bit edgy, but safe enough, I suppose. He's coming back for two as Nathan Astle. Nathan Astle, debut game for New Zealand. Oh, he goes for the big hit, and he's hit that beautifully. And, oh, it's right through. Bad miss out there. Roland Holder out there. That's the end of the over. 117 for four. Nathan Astle, good looking shot, will certainly get two, he may even get four, now it slows down a bit out there, so Sherwin Campbell out on the boundary, picks up and returns. Well, normally speaking, you're playing your first one day international, you do tend, do tend to get a little bit nervous, you see that uh, little Manhattan there, Remember those red dots have slowed things down accordingly. Picks it up. He's hit it down the ground. He's going to be out, is he? Yes, he's caught. Anderson Cummins takes a comfortable catch down at long on. Reasonably straight. Nathan Astle is gone, but a good effort on debut from the Canterbury man. Yeah, he never really hit this at all. He just looked, I think, to chip him over the infield and pick up a couple. But in the end, the timing was much better than he would have liked. And Cummins just really around and taking quite a comfortable catch. So... That's the end of Astle, a good debut, 123 for five. Astle, and Astle's looking to chip that and hit it wider, I think, probably more into the mid-wicket area. And it's turned on him a wee bit, and he's hit it a little bit better, and as a result, straight down to the man there, Anderson Cummins. Good start to his international career for Astle. Good looking drive down to Cummins at long on. Yes, I thought he played very well. They he had to get on with the job, obviously, with the circumstances. Wasn't afraid to do that. And as you see, looking to turn it, uh, Ian, but didn't quite get it where he wanted it. And straight down Anderson Cummins' throat. So Justin Vaughan now on strike. He's a left-hander, so uh, the field is changing over. And Justin Vaughan whoops it away just behind square. He's looking for two, and he'll get it. Cummins does the fielding. He likes to compose his innings as, with singles. He'll be trying to feed as much strike as he can to Shane Thompson. He's hit it straight over mid-off and into the stand it'll go. It's not a long edge down there. Perhaps Estill should have aimed in the same direction because Thompson made that look so easy. That's beautiful timing and a top shot. Brian Lara looking on with envy almost. A beautiful piece of timing. Don't see too many better shots than that. Oh, there could be a run out here if it hits. And look there, oh dear. Arthurton decided he would take all the time that was available. Kenny Benjamin bowls to Shane Thompson. In the air and dropped. Thompson gave himself room to slash it past point but hit it straight to the hands of Atherton and it blasted him away. Well, Shane Thompson is definitely hitting everything off the middle of the bat and there was no difference with this shot. He hit it hard. It was a sharp chance. A little bit of foxing going on here. Let's see what happens this delivery. Giving himself room, it's a good shot, but if it hits, he'll be gone. And uh, once again, the ball goes to Arthurton. Oh dear, it'll be run out if he hits and he misses the ball. Well, Vaughan came down and, and it wasn't able to be fielded into the over, nevertheless, 146 for five. And the bowling analysis so far, Ambrose has bowled six, so he'll finish off. Oh, 
of an absolute mess up here and Ambrose throws the stumps down and Thompson is the one that's going to have to sacrifice. He gave himself room to take a cheeky single into the offside. Vaughan came and then it appeared that Thompson changed his mind and Ambrose took aim and hit the stumps. This will have all happened in slow motion and unfortunately for New Zealand the wrong man has run out in my opinion. Shane Thompson, well he's not in the picture. It's tragedy for him. It's the sort of thing that can happen. And a 146 now New Zealand for six. But he just has a look at this one and gets a single to Atherton who came comes in as the offside sweeper very quickly. So just getting bat on ball, Dool, and, and giving uh, the opportunity for Vaughan. Let's look at the run out again. Yes, well, Thompson started and then stopped and started again, and by then it was all too late, and it was double tops, Kirtley Ambrose, trying to hit that double 20 at the top of the dartboard. He was very accurate. That's over toss. There should be two here, but Arthurton's snippy. They'll have to hurry, and quite wisely, I think, there. Duel decided not to come back. At the end of the Ambrose over, 140, 150 now up for six. Yep. This could be four, it's short out there, it is. Ambrose is at third man, he can't get around. And just dragged down a little short, Vaughan giving himself room nicely and playing one of his favoured cuts. Well, Justin Vaughan used to play at Gloucester and so does Courtney Walsh and he's probably done that many times in the nets. And that's a lovely shot. Chipping it, there could be a couple here. And there will be. They're looking for three. And that would have been cheeky. So just two balls now remaining in the New Zealand innings. Charging and launching it through extra cover. Goes down on one knee. It's his own way of doing things, Justin Vaughan. But it looked quite spectacular on this occasion. And he crashed it through extra cover for four. A change of strategy from Ambrose. This was fuller and slower. And Justin Vaughan, well, he read it well. Gave it everything he had. And it really smoked across the boundary. It was a bit of a heave, but it was certainly spectacular and got the reward that New Zealand wanted. Last ball of the innings. And they're looking to just take a single. Ambrose, no, wisely decides not to have a go. And therefore, at the end of the allocated 37 overs, now this has become a 37 over contest, New Zealand go through to 167 for six. And we see that Vaughan's on 21, now with Dole not out six. The New Zealanders have made a game of it under trying circumstances. Their score of 6 for 167 from 37 overs may prove to be a difficult one for the West Indies to reach. Six of the top seven have made a start, but no one has gone on to make a half century. Opener Brian Young top scored with 42. Sean Thompson made 37 from 38 balls. Astell made 25 on debut. Vaughan scored 21 from 19 deliveries. Of the West Indian bowlers, Courtney Walsh took the first two wickets and was economical. Ambrose threatened without breaking through. Arthurton took two wickets with his left arm spin and leg spinner Dan Raj took one for 21. We pick up the West Indian reply in the first over as Danny Morrison bowls to Stuart Williams. First runs of the West Indian innings. They should come back for two here. Simon Dool down there at fine leg. But it uh, went fairly square. Good return. Bit of swing there for Danny Morris. A bit of confusion with the running. Oh, dear, oh, me. That could have been a disaster for the West Indies. There was no communication. Sherwin Campbell looks like he might have done some damage, but he didn't move. He was at the non-striker's end. Let's have another look. Well, he would have gone, Bob. Hit. He was gone. I don't see any contact here with the, with the keeper. I think, I think he... Uh, tripped over his bat when he put the bat out to ground his bat. I think uh, he ran into the bat. Full looking to drive, doesn't time it. 
It's a bit of a performance and getting hold of a, a little cricket ball. Ben Rutherford gets a big round of applause. Simon Dool continues the attack. Stuart Williams. Oh, slow a ball, and uh, he gets hold of it. That's going to be four, the first boundary of the West Indian innings. He held it back, Dool, but he made a bit of a hash of it because it uh, sat up there and asked to be hit. Yes, this was badly bowled by Dool. He didn't need to do this. He didn't need to be experimenting this at this stage in the innings. He's got the new ball. His job is to land it, not to give batsmen free hits like that. Pushing forward, Miss Cuse a bit. He's keen to get a run, is Campbell. And he does get one, so he's underway. Bit of a struggle. And uh, that leg that he injured a little bit. And uh, he nearly got run out. Still giving a bit of a try out, as you see. Oh, good looking shot. That's a that's a cracking shot through the offside. Beats the infield, and there's no question about going to the boundary. Little short, a little wide, but punished. So we're going to see here in the back of his own replay, Danny Guilty there just being a little too wide, but once again, not getting the bounce that we saw those West Indian bowlers getting this morning. And it just sat up there asking to be hit, and with the fielders up, if he pierced the inner ring, it was going to be four. That's a pleasant stroke. Campbell just stands and admires it for a moment, then he decides that it's time he should run. I think he might have thought that it was going to the boundary. Either that or he's struggling. And in fact, he is struggling. He's uh, really battling on that injured leg. End of the over. 23 without loss. Oh, that's a beauty. Excellent delivery from Danny Morrison. Didn't really get the reward that it deserved. Oh, isn't it lovely to see a New Zealand bowler giving a West Indian batsman a bit of hurry up? Boots on the other foot. Williams really is feeling this. This has bounced considerably and taken him on the glove. Look at that hand. He wrenches it off the bat handle. It's hurt a wee bit. Might just be a little bit weary now of uh, Danny Morrison. Gives him a bit of width and pays the price. Four runs. End of the over for Morrison, 29 without loss. Attempted Yorker by Duell and he's paid the price. It's a full toss and it's four runs. Yes, well, we just mentioned that Sherwin Campbell's really struggling between the wickets. Didn't have to run for this one, of course, and he made no attempt to run. He stood there and hit it. It almost looked as if He'd hit it straight in the middle, and so he wasn't interested in the run, but he knew where it had gone. It's the nicest of full tosses. Straight bat coming down on top of it, and off it goes to the fence for four. Way up over the top. Has he got enough bat on it to go for six? No, it pitches and may just stop inside. It does too. And they're looking for a third, but they won't get back. So they're running between the wickets with Campbell struggling has meant that they've only got two, and the ball must have carried within 10 metres of the boundary. Well, the running between the wickets isn't great, but he really fetched that. Bit of a chip. 9-9, nine, nine. went a long way in the air and pitched and stopped. And that looks like uh, Arthurton, who's coming out as a runner. Current run rate at 3.3, and now the required run rate over fives. With all those wickets in hand, it's still not too urgent. That's the runner, Heath Atherton. There'll be a couple here, a duel in pursuit. Just a single for Williams. So the 50 has come up here in the 15th over for the West Indies. And after 15, New Zealand were 45 for two. Ken Rutherford, the skipper. And Gavin Larson, captain of Wellington. He's with the ball. A good line from Gavin Larson. Stuart Williams on strike. And what 
slips it away. Good looking shot. That'll get uh, four runs for him. Well played. And it wasn't that short. It was reasonably straight, but it just shows the ability of some of these players. Picked it up and uh, whipped it over the infield. Yes, as we're going to see in this Bank of New Zealand replay, that, that those wristy shots that the West Indians are renowned for. As you said, it was uh, a good length ball, and he just uh, picked it up. He just rolled the wrists, and, well, it was always going to be four runs, wasn't it? So Campbell on strike. Oh, E.G. It's going to get him a run. It all gets a bit confusing with the bats, two batsmen at one end, but of course there's a runner out square leg, so all is well. It does cater for uh, mess-ups, though, and uh, misunderstandings. Yes, but for the good of the team, Campbell's going to have to look at getting on with it. Oh, he's gone! Well, he got a little inside edge, went onto the stumps. So Gavin Larson gets the first break for New Zealand. Sherwin Campbell, who really has struggled out there for the West Indies, is finally gone. And uh, there he is. He makes his way off the park. We were seeing here on the Bank of New Zealand real play. It had to happen. That one came back and inside, tried inside edge. He hasn't been tying the ball well. Well bowled by Gavin Larson. So Larson breaks through and the West Indies lose their first wicket. 61 for one. So let's have another look at that wicket on the Bank of New Zealand replay. Gavin Larson, the bowler, getting Shewan Campbell, who had a bit of a nightmare out there. And he got a little inside nick on it, but he really was struggling. He didn't move the feet a great deal. And as you see, a ricochet through onto the middle stump. pleased about that as well he might be the new batsman is Brian Lara there he is playing through the onside there is a man in the deep out there Justin Vaughan so there's only one run to Lara which has come here with a tremendous reputation Brian Lara Down the wicket goes Lara and uh, hits it straight down the ground or slightly on the offside, I should say, to pick up four runs. Well, that was fairly straightforward. He didn't muck around and uh, hits him over mid-off for four. We're seeing here on the replay, this is the Bank of New Zealand replay, this is the way this man plays. If it's there, it doesn't matter his first or second ball in the innings, it gets put away. Yes, but the crowd have come to see. Fieldsman out there for New Zealand. Simon Dool coming in, but uh, the batsman will have time for two runs. Well, Nathan Astle made a very good debut with the bat. Came in just at a time when the run rate needed upping, and he certainly did that. 25 from 25 deliveries. But that is the situation for the West Indies. 5.58 they need from here. New Zealand need wickets, need them quickly. They could get two here. It's a very long run in for Danny Morrison. And Lara comfortably back. So the whole situation looking very good for the Windies at the moment. Very cheeky run this, and it might have been a bit close. Lara is looking for a second. But Williams couldn't pull up in time and head back in the other direction. I think Lara was actually the caller in that situation. Lara goes after this one, clears the field, and four runs. He's certainly the caller in this situation anyway. There should be two here as Dool does the fielding. Yes, that's right. So we're in the 23rd over. And as you see, 91 for one, and that is 50. For Stuart Williams, the first half century of the series. So here's the wagon wheel for Stuart Williams. 66 balls faced. Good strike right there for an opener of 77.3. The boundaries. Shots all around the ground. Again, Rutherford making sure he's got the field to his and Astle's liking. And now it's Astle to Lara. Oh, that's beautifully played by Lara. Not too far wide of the field, but straight out to the fence. Glorious stroke, four runs. Over the top. That's a big hit. It's right over the top. Six runs.
Yeah, high fives in the middle of the wicket between Lara and Williams. Both of them pretty happy with this one. Larson really just pulling it in the side of half volley, really. And on the Williams' toes, and he's launched into that with a lot of power. And that's cleared the boundary quite easily. Another look at from end on, drifting into his pads, and he's just helped it on its way. It's a very powerful stroke. And Ken Rutherford's reaction, hopeful of the catch. And throw it back. Williams looking for two. Very quick between the wickets. And in the end, back quite comfortably. Well, I'm sure these batsmen are well aware of the targets that are required with the very, uh, various overs as they pass through. Beautifully played again by Lara. And uh, that's going to go all the way. Launches into a beautiful shot on the offside. Duel got a fairly powerful arm, but Williams is comfortably home. And he's launched this one over long off. It's a beautiful shot, hit through the line, one bounce for four. And the New Zealand field up inside the circle on the offside. So a safe shot often wondered what it must be like to be the world's greatest batsman and the expectations that are upon you when you walk out to bat and certainly they're not affecting Lara today we've seen some extraordinary quality shot making it's just absolute excellence and walking across here getting it on the onside and whipping it down there because they put the long off back and it was a repeat of what you saw at the other end. Morrison came up inside the circle, the deep fine leg, and uh, Lara just walked across in front of his stumps and hit it down there for four. Pretty dark out there, but the rain has eased off. And picking it up behind square, it's short down there. A good attempt and by Justin Vaughan, but it's gone for four. And this is something that Simon Dool has to be very conscious of. He's drifted into the leg side, and it's a free hit to the shortest boundary in the ground. And very little chance there for Vaughan. In the air, and that was very nearly, but it's gone between the two. You leave the hole, and what happens? Lara is in devastating form as Thompson bowls to Williams. Well, that's gone over extra cover, and that's four. Hit it very cleanly, Stuart Williams. The offside sweep is much squarer than that, and it was a floaty one, but drifted so wide of off stump, gave him, freed his arms up nicely to smash it over there. Well, that's a real gimme. Perhaps the ball is slippery, which makes it difficult. If you're a spin bowler, certainly its ground conditions are getting a little worse. And Thompson is a few problems with his grip on the ball. Going way over the top, and they won't need to run for that one. They'll throw it back from the stand. It's gone way over long on. A very nice, clean hit, the ball drifting in, and that's the end of the over at 144 for one. There's the run chart, and they're all round the wicket, really, aren't they? Quite fine. Those ones that went down fine leg. The deflection through the slip and keeper, and then some beautiful shots straight down the wicket. Lara is certainly doing his best to finish this game as quickly as possible. And leans back and thrashes this. It's gone for four. The offside sweeper, Larson, can't get across. Leant back and gave it everything he could using what pace there was on the ball. And that's whistled across the turf for four. Rutherford probably looking at his run chart. He'll 
Yes, and the, they're going off. Well, that is disappointing for the fans. But it is starting to rain quite heavily here at the moment. So 27 overs. They needed to be 123 or ahead of that, and they're up to 149. So that's quite comfortable for the West Indies. So if they're not able to return, the game is theirs. And I don't think any of the uh, players really could be too sad about going off at this point. It's a foregone conclusion, the result of this game. In reply to 167 from New Zealand and 37 overs, the West Indies 141, 149 for one from 27. The game is abandoned, 27.4 overs into the West Indian innings. Brian Lara's commanding 55 from 32 balls has finished the job that Williams and Campbell started. Williams remained not out. 